Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we are showing you our 10 gigabit NAS media storage system that we use for our production company. So guys, if you like the videos I've been putting out, I'm trying to put out a lot more. If you could please subscribe to the channel, it really does help and helps with me coming out with more content. So please ignore the mess around the side here. I had to move this whole kind of rolly cart up here to get into a frame that make it easier to shoot and to talk about. So these cables are usually tucked behind back there and this is usually behind this work desk here. This is our main edit suite in our office. Um, our My editor, my post-production manager, Davey is typically here working away right now in Ontario, Canada. We're in another lockdown, another coronavirus kind of lockdown. Production is allowed to be open. Production facilities are allowed to be open, post-production facilities. But just as a precaution and way of trying to make things better, we are all working from home again. So right now we're not really utilizing this besides myself. I am working on getting external hard drives of people to be doing edits off of. But what we have been using in this system like this for about six months uh, before kind of going back into a lockdown and some of these other NAS servers I have been using for one for the Synology for about three or four years and the QNAV for just over a year. So I'm going to go into those and I'm going to go into the 12 um, or sorry, the 10 gigabyte switch that I have up top here. And that's kind of the key thing that kind of puts this all together. So why would you want to have a system like this? And how does a system like this become beneficial for you as a video production business or as a freelancer? So, you know, as a freelancer, maybe this is a bit overkill. I'm going to go into the QNAV a bit more. That's probably going to be a really great solution. But if you are a team or you're finding yourself with a team and, or a growing team and more and more people are working on files in the same workplace, having a network server or something you can work off um, and all work off of it is very convenient. We were for years working with things like external hard drives like this, where we had one external hard drive backing up to another external hard drive and having systems like this for each workstation. Now, the problem that this kind of runs into is when you start to collaborate on projects or you want to get on somebody else's workstation or... They need to get on your workstation because you have the project files in there or you're sharing project files back and forth. It's way quicker and easier if you can be all working off of one main area or one main place that you're storing all your files. Now also with something like this, with just an external hard drive, you cannot connect multiple computers to this unless you're going through something like a... Uh, a system like a NAS, a, a Synology or a QNAB, or, and I'm sure there's other ones out there. Now, I do want to make a disclaimer, guys. I am not a IT wizard. I am not a any sort of wizard when it comes to computers and network storages and all those things. I've linked to some other people in the description below that will give you more in-depth into these systems that I'm using, both the QNAB and the Synology. And really there was uh, Max on, I always say his last name wrong, so I'm not even gonna say it, on YouTube that I had been following for a long time. He has great content. He had some stuff on the QNAB and that really pushed me on buying that system. So let's first go into the QNAB and what QNAB is and what makes the QNAB different. So the QNAB we have here, is an eight base storage system. And the great thing that I found with this, besides it being a crazy smart, it's basically a computer inside there, you can do all these things that we don't utilize probably 90% of the things it's used for or it can be used for. We're just using it as a simple kind of storage device. But the reason I went to that last year was I wanted a way to easily plug in a few computers to one device. So the QNABs come with uh, two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back. And they work, if you're working on a Mac, they work, I haven't tried this on a PC, so anybody can let me know if you have been using it on a PC, but on a Mac, they work up super well. It used a QNAB, uh, Q Finder. It pops up on your computer. It will say, Thunderbolt device has been connected. And then you have, you basically connect that way. 
and it's that simple. It's really that simple to get up and running with this. Um, very little things you need to know and know how to do. You don't have to have an IT specialist come in to help you. If I can set it up, you guys can set it up and it works great. You can have redundancy on it. I have two drives that can die. So there is uh, 80 terabytes. There's eight, 10 terabyte drives in there, but I have two drives set up for redundancy. So um, this actually reads 60 terabytes of space in there. And then I actually have it, my main working project file, this, because uh, there's USB connections to it as well, this hard drive, this 40 terabyte hard drive, backs up from our working project files every day as well. And I have set that up with the QNAB and that was very simple. The QNAB does have a 10 gigabit output as well. It has one 10 gigabit output. So what you can simply do and what we were doing in the beginning was, I had two computers connected to it through Thunderbolt 3. And I had one computer that was actually over here on this side that was using a 10 bit gigabit going over to it. And then I was using a thing like this that we still use on two of our computers. This is a Thunderbolt 2 Synology. I have this link to in the description below. Uh, that's a Thunderbolt 2. So if you're using an older uh, iMac or we still have one of the, um, we have one older iMac with Thunderbolt 2 and we also have a the old trash can looking uh, MacBook, or sorry, not Mac Pros that we also have. So that uses Thunderbolt 2. So this way, with the Thunderbolt 2 connection to a 10 gigabit thing, you can get 10 gigabit into it. So we had one of the computers set up here with that cable going through the wall. On the other side, we had two other computers hooked up to this. And it worked pretty great. Now, the issue or one of the downsides of going to just Thunderbolt 3 is, in my opinion, the length of cable. I mean, you can only get, I think maybe you can get a four foot or a six foot cable. It's not that far if you want to have computers set apart or you're working from different offices. You can't do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. As I was editing this, I was looking for some different elements to put into the video and I have been lying to you guys. You can get longer than four feet, six feet Thunderbolt 3 cables. I just found these on B&H, 16 feet, 32 feet, 49 feet, 82 feet. So if you wanted to, you could do long runs with the QNAB just with the Thunderbolt 3 connection. And I believe with the QNAB, you can put another card in there to have another two Thunderbolt 3 connections. I believe that is also possible. So you wouldn't have to get a 10 gigabyte switch if you want to run more than two computers off of it and have them farther apart. But where this does get interesting is that cost-wise, if you look at the price of these cables, for that's an 80 foot one, $400 US, basically $390 US for a 49 foot cable. Cat5 is way cheaper than that. Two of these cables and you have, or just a bit more than that, you have bought the 10 gigabit switch. So cost wise, it is still much better to go with the 10 gigabit switch. Okay, back to proper video and audio. For a while we were working this way and I wanted to connect more computers to it. And I also had this Synology NAS below that we were using as a backup system for a lot of our projects. Once they're finished, they would go media managed and they'd go on that system. And we'd also be put them onto LTO tape that I have a video about. I'm gonna be redoing that one shortly because there's some different processes we've been doing now with backing up our all our footage on LTO tape at the end. So that's what we were doing with the Synology one. But the Synology system I have, I know there's newer Synology ones out there, but the ones that we have, it also has 80 terabytes in it, again with two terabytes, or sorry, 80 terabytes with 20 terabytes redundancy, two drives. Um, we were using this over just regular one gigabit network and it was pretty slow. You could definitely could not work off of it, edit off of it. You could transfer stuff to it, but it was slow. Synology does sell a card that I can put into it, so I found. So I can get a 10 gigabit card that I put into it. Then I had 10 gigabit ethernet with that. 
and I had 10 gigabit ethernet with this, the next last thing I needed to find was a 10 gigabit switch. Now, before I talk about this, why do we want to then change from using Thunderbolt and having three computers working, it was working for us pretty well, to go into 10 gigabit. And what is the benefit of using 10 gigabit? So in my opinion, there's gonna be a lot of other people that are gonna have experts on this, are gonna say different things on this, but in my opinion and in, in our working process or what we were doing, the real benefit for us for going to 10 gigabit was the ability to connect a lot more devices with it and to have our workstations in farther places. So, you know, you could have this in a server room. You could have this farther away because you could be running like 50 foot Cat 5 cables or Cat 6 cables. You can be doing that. So that's one of the big things with going with 10 gigabit, in my opinion, is that you can be having multiple. I have a lot of different outputs on the front of this um, 10 gigabit switch. We can have multiple computers and spaced out in different places running with pretty cheap, affordable Cat 6, Cat 5 cable, I believe even works. I believe some of the ones I'm using is Cat 5 cable and I have no problem running that all over the place. So that's typically how we work. We have none of the cables plugged in right now. I'm gonna show you the B-roll here of plugging in the cables and what it goes. This QNAB 10 gigabit switch is probably one of the most affordable one. Again, I'm gonna to link to that in the description below. One of the most affordable ones I could find and one that was really a 10 gigabit switch. There was other ones I was looking at before that I thought were 10 gigabit switches, but then I found out by talking to some IT friends that were advising me a bit on things that they weren't really, it was only 10 gigabit in and one 10 gigabit out or they weren't, this is a true 10 gigabit switch. So you can put 10 gigabit in and all these outputs have 10 gigabit as well. So easily I plug in one, two, I have two of the drives plugged in, two of the NAS, the Synology plugged in and the QNAB plugged in. And then I am taking my outputs and having those out to my different computers. And really with your computers on the Mac side anyways, it does not, it's not that hard to set this up. There wasn't any software I needed to put in. Um, I found sometimes in the network connections, if I had ethernet plugged in as well, or sometimes even my Wi-Fi, it was hard for it to find it at the beginning. But once I had it set, set up within my network connections, as this, it's getting the IP address from this, the QNAP 10 gigabit switch, it was easy. I could connect to both my devices, no problem. So if you are working on a Mac or you're working on Mac based systems and you want to have 10 gigabit, you need to have some things on your computer to be able to get that. You need to have a 10 gigabit input. So the new iMac, which is typically here working, uh, the 2020 iMac has the ability and has the function of getting the uh, 10 gigabit upgrade to put that into it. Same with the Mac mini. I know in the older Mac mini, I'm not sure in the new M1, but I'm probably sh pretty sure that that would still be a thing you could get a 10 gigabit connection, not just a regular ethernet connection. And the other way to do that is something like this. This is what I use with my MacBook when I'm going back and forth. This is a uh, OWC, uh, I'll link to it below. It's the Thunderbolt 3 dock. And one of the cool things that it has on it besides you know allowing you to have other features and other connections to it, it, it comes with a 10 gigabit um, input onto it. So, I plug into it through my USB 3 or Thunderbolt 3, and then I plug in that for my 10 gigabit, and I can, that's how I connect to this whole system this way. Uh, very simple, and again, the other way you can be using it is with, if you're using an older uh, Thunderbolt 2 device, you can be using one of these dongles, uh, Synologies, or sorry, this is not a Synology, this is a Sonnet, um, and it's a solo 10 gig. You can also get these for Thunderbolt 3. So if you don't wanna buy uh, one of these over this, you can do that. But I think the price was pretty comparable or close to both of them. So this was a much better buy because you got a lot more in out. So you got some other card readers built into it. It's a better way to do it. So there is a little bit of extra cost built up that way. But if you are expanding a team, if you're looking to have multiple editors, working off the same drive at the same time and you wanna have space to do that or you wanna be able to space people out and not be confined by the length of Thunderbolt 3 cables, this is one of the easiest and most cost efficient ways to go. Now saying that, the QNAB itself is a really great device. 
So if you are a smaller production team or you are, maybe you're just a solo um, freelancer and you are doing editing and you're doing production work and you're looking for a little bit better system, the QNAB is really a great thing to go with. Again, there's some other reviews and videos that go way more in depth on the QNAB that I'm linking to up here and below. Um, and having that functionality to go over Thunderbolt 3 works really well, really fast, really simple. I'd highly recommend that if you're looking for something that's a little bit more robust, bigger space. Um, there is cost to this, you know, it's not a cheap unit just for, without putting any hard drives in. I'll show you the costs here. The Synology one is quite a bit cheaper and there isn't the same functionality over the two. If I am, and this is likely gonna happen later, adding another NAS onto this to have more storage space, I'm likely gonna be going to with another Synology one with a 10 gigabit card, just for the costs and the, the speed tests I have found, they both work the same, no huge difference that way. But that's because I already have this whole system. If I was starting from the beginning and I was just uh, a solo person, I didn't need a 10 gigabyte switch, I'd be going with the QNAB, even though it costs more, it's simpler to use um, and you can connect to it through Thunderbolt 3. So guys, that's just our working system, how we do things in this. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If there's other things you'd like to see more details on, please let me know in the comments below. We're also gonna be doing some more videos on how we organize our projects, how we do our project management, I've had some older videos where I talked about that before. They're about three or four years old now. So some things have changed a little bit. So we're gonna update those and share those with you guys because they should be able to really help you out on your project workflow, on your project workflow and post-production workflow. It's really important to stay organized, especially when you start doing more and more jobs. Keeping your footage organized, keeping your footage safe and keeping your footage stored somewhere safely is very, very important. So thanks so much guys for watching this one. Please like and the video, if you did like it, please think of subscribing to the channel and we'll see you on the next one.